Form videos. I'm Peter Loshak. This is the uh, NFL Line Moves show that we do every Friday, kind of a bookend show to the opening line show that I do with Joe Duffy on Monday and on Mondays. And we uh, take a look back at the uh, line moves from the week, compare them to uh, what we thought might happen uh, when we did our show on Monday. Right now, we're looking at the NFL Week Six. Joe, thanks for being back with us. Thank you, Peter. Did you hear what the line is in the Jacksonville Denver game? All right, all right, okay, okay. That, 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 we're moving on, Joe. We're moving on, Joe. You know, we don't we don't want to beat a dead horse. You have to you make your joke and then you get out. You got it. All right, okay, all right, all right. But I'll tell I'll tell you one thing that's not funny at all. You ready, Joe? Uh, yes. We thought right that the that the total in New Orleans and, and New England would go down. You suggested it, and I looked at it, and I was like, wow, I completely agree with that. I bet it at 49 and a half and 50, it's gone up. It's 50 and a half. That's actually one of the more significant totals line moves on the card this week. What do you make of that? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's a humongous move, but as I said, that I, I thought that a lot of the square money, they're automatically the knee-jerk reaction is mm -hmm. going to be bet the over. So... Some of the knee-jerk money has moved it up, but I still think before game time, it will go down. So, you know, so it might be a chance for some people to middle the total, but I, I still think the sharp money before the game is going to bet it down. All right, now let's take a look at uh, two of the biggest moves, the two biggest moves on the spreads on the week. First of all, the most obvious one, the Jets, right? They were, uh, before the Monday night game, they were right. a small home dog. After the Monday night game, which they won, they're a small home favorite. Pittsburgh, of course, coming off the bye. Now there's news that Cromartie's out for the Jets. I'm thinking that's an overreaction. What do you think? Yeah, in fact, I'm actually very happy to say, thankfully, I have some proxy sources. I wound up middling this game personally. Wow. Um, I don't know if it's really an overreaction. I have said all along the Steelers are that horrible. Now, mm -hmm. I middled it because of a money management, not because I definitely think each side will cover, but it's a smart right. money management thing when you can get a middle that big. All in all, I still like the Jets. After mm. the line moves, the Steelers are just that awful. All right. Well, that was uh, well, maybe the biggest line move of the week. And then another big line move was uh, one that we kind of, uh, I think we identified in our show. You know, uh, Buffalo, as a home mm. underdog, they, uh, they're now six and a half at Bookmaker that I'm seeing. That is a huge, huge thing when something crosses from seven and a half onto mm. seven and then back down below seven. That's a huge move. At Pinnacle, it went from, uh, it moved a full two and a half points from nine and a half juiced to seven juice, which is where it is now. So obviously, uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming that that's gotta be because of uh, sharp money. I don't think the public is just seeing this and being like, yes, give me Buffalo. Yeah, no, I, I'm a big EJ Manuel supporter, so I think his injury is substantial. But on the other hand, Cincinnati as a huge road favorite, that's way too scary. The Bengals have been a predictably unpredictable team, one of those terms I like to use. You know, even without E.J. Manuel, that is a very shaky team laying a lot of points on the road. So I, I didn't shock me that that line did move in the direction of the home underdog. Yeah, I'm kind of agreeing with that move myself, although at six and a half, I'm not sure if I would be uh, so excited yeah. to uh, take Buffalo. We'll see where that line closes. Uh, and then I noticed in the in the Philly-Tampa Bay game, I was thinking that might be a game that, you know, people might stay mm -hmm. off of. But uh, it seems like it's it, Philadelphia. The line's moving in Philadelphia's direction. It opened it at Pickham. Then I think when we discussed it, it was like Philly minus one. Now it's all the way up to uh, three. Even mm -hmm. if you believe Michael Vick is the better quarterback long-term, Foles is going to give him an element of surprise because he's worked with the offense. I know that they had a different coach last year and Andy Reid, a, a, a different offense, but he still has developed chemistry with the players both last year and in the preseason. He worked with the first-team offense. He worked last week with them. I think short-term, short-term, Nick Foles starting will actually help Philadelphia, and I think a lot of the sharp players agree with me. Yeah, it's not it's not three flat anywhere. It's you know okay. three. It's you know the 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 best line is uh, Tampa Bay. Uh, you know plus three at like minus one twenty or something. But still, it does seem like the uh, like the line has moved in Philly's favor. And then there are two big uh, road dogs that uh, both have taken a little bit of money. The moves been the lines have gone a little bit in their favor. Uh, the first one is Oakland, right? They opened at plus yeah. ten at Bookmaker. Now they're at eight, and uh, they also went down a half a full half point at Pinnacle as well. And then also at Tennessee. Uh, as, as a double-digit uh, road underdog at Seattle, appears to have taken uh, some money. They're now plus 12 and a half at Bookmaker and uh, 13 and a half, but very juiced at Pinnacle. What do you make of uh, those two moves? Yeah, Seattle is. A, they're obviously one of the top teams in the NFL, but they're not designed to blow teams out. So them laying 13 and a half points, they're not going to be involved in as high-scoring game as, for example, at Denver. So you have to look at the spread relative to the total. 13 and a half doesn't always equal 13 and a half, depending on whether it's going to be low scoring or high scoring. So yeah, that's a lot of points for a Seattle team to be laying. And Oakland, 
Look, I've been a big believer of them all year. Kansas City, of all the undefeated teams, Kansas City certainly had the easiest schedule. I don't think they're quite as good as the record state. So the sharp money on, o on Oakland, probably one of the least surprising uh, money moves of the entire year. And then, uh, yeah, just the Denver game, you know, we previewed that. I do see that it's still 26 and a half. There's some places who've gone down to a 26. Uh, Joe Duffy, where do you think this line will close? Just make a prediction. No, I think it's, I think it'll be less than 28. So I would mm -hmm. say, you know, 27 probably. So, so you think it's going to go back up a little bit to 27? Yeah, it's going to go up, but it's not going to go back to 28, which isn't quite a key number, but it's, it's significant enough. Okay, well, if it moves up to a 27, then that'll be a little bit uh, money in Denver's favor because right now it's 26 or 26 and a half. All right, but before we let you go, is there anything else that uh, caught your eye this week? Yeah, a lot of places, Dallas opened up at three and a half. They're up to five and a half. Again, it didn't cost, cross a key number, but a number that low that's pretty significant. And we Sharps, we've been going against Washington all year. Still don't believe in them. Tony Romo's definitely a playmaker against quality teams. He seems to make that mistake at the wrong time, but he's not going against a very good team this week. I think the Sharps believe that Dallas is going to rebound from that tough loss last week and destroy Washington. That's another line move that really didn't surprise me very much. All right. Thanks so much, Joe Duffy. We will talk to you again on Monday.